And Corey, it seems like security spending is rising. Well, you know, it certainly is, and, and it's been so much in the news. In fact, there's even a debate whether the news alone is driving demand, and Symantec made reference to that in the earnings today, in the earnings announcement today, and the call as well. Um, let me just take a couple things. So you see the stocks up about 23% over the course of the year. We don't care about stocks, but sometimes it does tell us something about the company. And one of the things this stock chart tells you is how steady things are at Symantec. So one way to look at that, of course, is how much stuff they're selling. If you look at the revenue growth rate for this company, it's been steady and steadily improving. Those are revenues. Usually for most kinds of companies, that tells you a lot about what you need to know in terms of at least sales. Profitability, as we can discuss with the Groupon, is an entirely different story. But in software, it's not just about what you've booked in revenues. It's what you're about to book when it comes to future bookings or, or, or back-end bookings or, or you know, the, lots of companies use different, lots of different words for it. And the growth in deferred revenues for Symantec has been just really impressive. Quarter after quarter, more. What deferred revenues are, quite simply, is customers have already paid and the service has yet to be delivered. So what it gives you with Symantec is a great deal of predictability of future sales. And what it shows you is that quarter after quarter, more people, more customers are signing up for those services. And you're starting to see that reflected in the company's success in the, in the public markets. And in the conference call, they've continued to talk about how they're racking up those bookings, how deferred revenues are stacking up even more, suggesting more success in coming quarters. Emily? Thanks, Corey. Now, joining us to discuss Symantec's earnings report is analyst Joel Fishbein. He covers application and infrastructure software at Lazard Capital Markets and currently has a buy rating on the stock. Joel, welcome to Bloomberg West. Thank you for having um, me. You know, first of all, a lot of tech companies reported earnings today. Most of them are down. HomeAway, Akamai, Citrix. Symantec is up. Why? Uh, as Corey mentioned on the call, two things are happening. From a macro environment, the threat environment, as everybody knows, is, is becoming pretty pervasive. Symantec has done a phenomenal job in terms of uh, focusing on the right areas. Before, a lot of areas of security were focused on the endpoints. What Symantec has done is acquired several companies to focus on the data, whether it's in the cloud, on the endpoint, you know, on an iPhone, et cetera. And uh, that's just starting to show up in their numbers. And it's not only showing up in the revenue and, and earnings per share now, but as Corey said, uh, the deferred revenues growing very nicely so they've built a nice business and so they're bucking the trend and after several quarters of struggling we're starting to see some good execution out of the company. So basically is Symantec benefiting from all the hack attacks going on out there? Uh, absolutely and uh, unfortunately these hack attacks there haven't been uh, any software companies or security companies that have been able to stop them as of to date but what I, as I said that uh, Symantec's put together the most comprehensive uh, portfolio of, of security technologies that are out there uh, enabling them to be the go-to player on the large enterprises that are trying to stop the these, these threat environments. Where do you see the weaknesses in Symantec's model? Well, right now, the, the one weakness that you can see is the consumer-based uh, um, uh, security market. Um, that, that only grew 5% year over year. Um, and what you're seeing now is you see a lot of freemium software, and obviously you're seeing PC demand go down fairly dramatically. An area that I think that they're going to focus on is this consumer market, but from a different aspect, and that is the aspect of, of mobility and the mobile environments, protecting all the different uh, devices that are out there, uh, like the iPhones and the iPads and uh, the Droid devices, et cetera, that you've been talking about on the program. And uh, so I, I think there's going to be one of two angles that they attack. Number one, they're going to try to do it organically somewhat, but I also think that you're going to see, to see them do acquisitions. Why hasn't Symantec been more aggressive in mobile security so far? I think that it's been so fragmented. It's very hard with all the different operators, and there has been no de facto standard. And it's really hard uh, to try to develop a security solution on all the different platforms. But as you're seeing more of the emerging, you know, I've, uh, yeah, Apple devices beating the RIM devices, and you're seeing more of the Google Droid devices becoming more pervasive, and you only have two or three of the major platforms out there that are actually winning, I think you're going to st start to see some standardization in the security programs. So what companies might Symantec be looking into buying? Huh. It, uh, there's a couple of really interesting uh, private companies that are out there. Um, one's called Mobile Iron, which is a, a really interesting technology out there. There's a company called Good Technology that's out there. Um, these are some of the leading providers, private providers of, of mobile security um, that are out there, and I think they're, they're fairly interesting. All right. Joel Fishbein, interesting stuff. Thanks for joining us here Thank you, on Emily. Bloomberg West.